Greetings, welcome back. All right, so there was a suggestion I looked at today and I thought, yeah, yeah, I could do that because there's a video I've been wanting to do and this qualifies as a career video and this qualifies as a career cut short. And I even had to go back and look and say, okay, did I already do a video? I've done a video on Vladimir Konstantinov, but it was not, not as robust as this video is going to be. Put it that way. Where I just had his career stats on the board and I talked about how he hit. And he hit a lot. Uh, born March 19th, 1967. He wasn't drafted until 1999. It was a 221st overall pick. He would have been drafted early. Early by today's standards, if not for the Iron Curtain. So the Soviet Union being as it is, their best players end up playing with Red Army. Uh, so he plays for CSK Moscow at age 17. 84, 85, 40 games played, one goal, four assists, five points. And what's not known at the time is he's going to be one of these guys. That's right, Russian five. Uh, 85, 86, if you haven't watched it, you should. It's great. The, the show's great. The book's great, too. 85, 86, 26 games, four goals, three assists, seven points. 86, 87, still for CSKA Moscow. We're at Army. Uh, 35 games, two goals, two assists. 87, 88, 50 games, three goals, six assists, nine points. 88, 89, 37 games, 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. Now what's interesting is, the Soviet Union decides, we'll sell off some of our veteran, veteran players. We've got all these young guys coming up, we'll protect the young guys. The veterans can go over and play in North America, it's fine. So they send over a handful of guys, and Konstantinov is not one of the handful of guys. Younger, right? So 89-90, playing for Moscow still. 47 games, 14 goals, 13 assists, 27 points. The interesting thing with Konstantinov is he's not a slouch offensively. He's just not known for the offense because he's such a good hitter. And he's so tough. So 90-91, his last year playing for Moscow, 45 games, 5 goals, 12 assists, 17 points. In the summer of 91, the Red Wings decide we want him. And Konstantinov's like, yeah, I want to go to North America. So they kind of have to use some skullduggery to make it happen. Uh, Valari Matveyev, okay, um, who was a, a, a journalist over there, uh, bribes six doctors, six different doctors, throws them some money to say, yeah, he has inoperable cancer. Uh, you, he's not fit to serve in the military. So the Soviets go, okay, and they, they let him out of the military. And then the wings got, had to get him out. There was a Soviet coup that took place that summer too. So, uh, I just want to read a, a, a portion portion of this. Uh, devastated, downright, uh, distraught, angry, and scared. Konstantinov's playing career in Russia was certainly over. More likely, he could be headed to prison. So, this is, this is when they're worried that well, we're still in the Soviet Union. We've just lied. Uh, then a telephone rang. Uh, the guy said he was a big hockey fan and found all these documents. But, of course, we knew it was bandits who stole it. He said he would call back to arrange for us to meet him and pick it up. Uh, Matveyev was wary. Events like this could go from bad to worse in a society growing increasingly lawless as the government eased its control over the people. He immediately called a friend who had a gun to help us with this situation, Matveyev said. We didn't know if the bandits would want more money from us or something else. The hour was approaching midnight. When the phone rang again, the caller was to meet him near Cosmos Hotel in northeast Moscow to get the documents. Armed with uh, some hockey sticks, a helmet, and other trinkets, the only things they had that might work as a bribe, Matveyev and Konstantinov went to the hotel to make what they hoped would be a quick and uneventful exchange without the need to use the gun. And this was all just to get him out of Russia. And it it is, again, it's, it's fascinating. I gave the money to six Russian doctors. All of them swore he had an inop inoperable sarcoma, and he was dying of cancer. Um... And then they, Detroit gets in there. Um, the major thing for Vladi was leaving his wife and daughter behind like that. He was a family man. He left them behind for a couple of days. Had to be tough for him to do that. Uh, Konstantinov nevertheless managed to enjoy the plane ride to Detroit. Polano had fallen asleep in the flight at the back, uh, on the flight back. And when he awoke somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean, he noticed nearly everyone was sleeping too. But when he looked forward at the flight deck, he had to rub his eyes and sure again. Uh, sure enough, Konstantinov was in the cockpit, cockpit seated at the controls. I thought, holy cow, I can't believe it. He can't be flying the airplane. Uh, he, he rose, walked to the front, and addressed the flight crew. What's going on? He's not a pilot. Mr. Polano, nothing's happening, the captain said. Everything's on autopilot. He's not hurting anything. 
<laughs> As scheduled, Konstantinov's wife and daughter arrived in Detroit two days later. Konstantinov was already skating with his new teammates, getting ready for training camp that would launch a memorable career. And he was 5'8", 5'11", 185 pounds. And you wouldn't know it from watching him play. He was, uh, and again, that's from the Russian Five book. Highly recommend it. It's great. Um, it, it is it is very entertaining. So I didn't want to just put this out. And yeah, there was a Soviet coup that happened. And they got him out around that time using Mike Illich's private jet. And I, I wanted to just discuss a little bit of what people were going through with this. I did. Uh, now, when he came over, Vladnator was a nickname for him. Vlad the Impaler was a popular one, too. Usually given to him by um, his opponents. And he was just basically Vladdy to the team. 91-92, uh, his first year in the National Hockey League, 79 games, 8 goals, 26 assists, 34 points. This is where I start tracking penalty minutes because it's key. 172. And then I spent a lot of time looking for just how many hits he recorded in the NHL. I, I can't find that stat recorded for how many hits he had in the National Hockey League. I know it was all of them. I'm aware that he threw all of the hits for Detroit at that period. But this was still a Detroit team that now that he was part of the team, large vocal part of the community complaining about the amount of Russian content with the Detroit Red Wings, and that would get worse. 92, 93, 82 games, 5 goals, 17 assists, 22 points. 137 penalty minutes, 93-94, 80 games played, 12 goals, 21 assists, 33 points, 138 penalty minutes. Notice those 12 goals. Again, he was better offensively than he got credit for. He was he was a very sound all-around defenseman. 47 games in the lockout shortened 94-95 season, 3 goals, 11 assists, 14 points, 101 penalty minutes that year. So again, he could he dropped the gloves if he had to. He threw a lot of hits. He did take a share of penalties, but he was a very effective defenseman. 95-96, arguably his best year because his plus-minus was a ridiculous, absolutely insane plus 60. Ridiculous. Led the NHL that year. 81 games, 14 goals, 20 assists, 34 points, and 139 penalty minutes. Remember, this is a blue line that also has Nick Lidstrom. And, of course, Fatisov is out there for him as well. So if you have Fatisov, you have Konstantinov, and you have the Russian Five coming together. But 95-96 is a very key year for Detroit. This is a year where they record, you know, all-time wins records, and they're they're just great. And then in the playoffs, they don't get it done. The, the question becoming one of, are yeah, there too many Europeans? Now, Vlad Konstantinov, to his credit, didn't take the amount of, of criticism that Fedorov, Larionov, that these guys technically got, and Kozlov as well, that they were too soft. In fact, Konstantinov routinely was, was regarded as the North American of the bunch. He played North American hockey. Um, 139 penalty minutes that year. He's a second-team All-Star, and he's fourth in Norris voting. 96-97, his last year as, a, as an active National Hockey League player, 77 games, 5 goals, 38 assists, 33 assists, 38 points. 151 penalty minutes. He was second in Norris voting, and yet somehow he was a fifth team All Star. How does that work? How did how I sometimes I look at the voting and I go, what? And I, I even double checked and I'm like that he had to have at least been a first or second team All Star. No, no, no. So he was second in Norris voting a year after being fourth. I think Konstantinov, if his career had gone on long enough, he definitely would have won a Norris Trophy. I think if not for what happened seven days after that 1997 Cup win, he'd be a Hall of Famer. He he would have had his jersey retired for certain, and he would have at least won one Norris Trophy. Now, seven days after they win the Stanley Cup, there's the limo crash. Fatisov's in that as well, and uh, Konstantinov is wheelchair bound for that next year. And he's never coming back. We know he's never going to play again. In fact, there were concerns about whether or not he would live through that at the time that it took place. It was a horrendous accident. The limo driver should not have been driving. He was on a suspended license. He didn't have a license for drinking and driving. So this ends his career. And, and it is a, a, a preemptive ending of this career. He ended up with a plus 38 that year too. He was just great. They win the Stanley Cup with him. He only recorded, I think it was like four assists in 20 games, but that doesn't matter. The interesting thing with Vlad is any offense you get from him is a bonus. 
The 47 goals in 446 games is pretty high considering the game he played. 175 points overall. Again, it's pretty high. And then you compare his NHL totals with the USSR totals. 280 games played, 36 goals, 48 assists, 84 points in the USSR, 179 penalty minutes. In the National Hockey League, 838 penalty minutes in 446 games. So he played a very physical, very in-your-face style, especially considering he's 5'11". We talk a lot about defensemen. they got to be big defensemen. they got to be above 6 foot tall. This guy played like he was 6 foot 10. He played like he, and, and you had to have your head on a swivel when Constantino was on the ice. 82 games in the playoffs, 5 goals, 14 assists, 19 points, and 107 penalty minutes in the playoffs. The most interesting thing with Konstantinov is, you do any kind of search here on YouTube, you'll find all kinds of hits from Vladi. He was a pretty clean player. You didn't hear a lot of complaining about Vladi's hits and, oh, he should be out of the game, He should. The, he's always crossing the line. You didn't really hear that. And I don't think if he played now, you'd hear it either. You would still see penalty minute totals that were high, not as high as this. Penalty minute totals have been dropping over the last 30 years. But you'd still see pretty decent penalty minute totals from him. And I think his hit totals would probably be top five in the league. I have to say, for a guy who's 5'11", he was arguably the best hitter when he was in the game. Um, when they won the Cup in 98... A big part of how they won the cup was playing floor for Vladdy, who watched that. And when they when they won the cup in '98, they brought him out on the ice to celebrate that victory. Gary Bettman, for all the booing that he takes when he's out on the ice, uh, he allowed for for Vladdy's name to be on the Stanley Cup in that 1998 Cup win. He could totally understand Detroit's request for that, and he was 100% behind it. Now, Vladdy also won World Junior Gold in '86. He won World Championship gold in 87, 89, and 90, and a bronze in 91 at the World Championships as well. After he retired, after he was out of the game, Detroit never retired his number, but they didn't have to. Nobody's wore that number since uh, that Stanley Cup final win in 1997. Brett Hull, number 16 his entire career, goes to, Saint, goes to Detroit, wears 17. Pat Verbeek, number 16 his entire career, goes to Detroit, where's number 15? It's unofficially retired. And it's unofficially retired for one of the toughest players that I think has ever played the game. Pound for pound? Absolutely. So there you go. Career of Vladimir Konstantinov, which sadly was only in 446 games in the NHL, but a great player. So I'll put him into my Hall of Fame if that makes anybody feel any better. I don't think it will, but yeah, he belongs in the THG Hall of Fame. Uh, absolutely uh, fantastic brief career. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.